it might seem diametrically opposed. 67 millimeters of air cooler clearance versus 280 millimeters of max radiator capability in the Q58. And I think a lot of folks will lean towards the AIO route uh, based on that metric. But let's take a look at the thermal performance you can expect. I'll show you how to set up the case for best performance. And I think you'll actually be interested in setting it up this way because if you give an air cooler what it needs to succeed, it's actually quite good. Welcome to 2022 and welcome to Machines and More. With the AIO testing and mods wrapped up, we're switching gears to air cooling this Q58. Liquid CPU cooling with a 240 or 280 in open air is going to be far superior compared to a little air cooler like the ID Cooling IS60 that I'll be testing with. But here's the thing, right? With a top mounted radiator and a sandwich style case like the Q58, it's a tug of war between your CPU and GPU cooling in a combined use scenario. Out of the box, even with a fairly good AO setup involving the Fantex T30s as rad fans, the CPU cooling does suffer when a hot GPU is running and you either have to choose to let the GPU dump a bunch of heat through your radiator or you have to put up with a hot GPU. And I think the majority of gamers and general users would choose the former setup, especially if you have a hot GPU 90 degrees uh, really isn't a viable configuration for a graphics card. With some mods, the performance does also get much better like we tested. But one thing that sandwich style cases do really well is when air cooling, there's very little interaction between the two components because they each occupy their own half. And the case fans don't really care if a bunch of hot air is dumped through them. I mean, that's kind of what they're there for. With the Q58, you have 67 to 68 millimeters of clearance. And even though it's limiting, that still means you can go as big as something like a stock Scythe Big Shuriken 3 or ID Cooling's IS60 Evo. And both of these coolers use a slim 120 millimeter fan. The IS60 has an extra 92 millimeter fan underneath, but at least from my experience, the added noise isn't really worth it. So I, I usually take that one off. In this air cooler size bracket, you can also run the stock AMD Wraith Stealth Cooler that came with CPUs like the 2600 or the 3600. We'll go with the IS60 EVO here today, and I'm going to be swapping out the stock RGB fan for a higher performance slim fan, and that'll be the Noctua NFA 12x15. And for a bit of consistency, we'll keep the Fantex T30s on top and the NFA 12x25 at the bottom, although we will be running them slower at 60% since they'll only be doing case fan duty. With this type of setup, you realistically have two options for the panels. Uh, you can either vent the bottom half of the case, so venting the area immediately in front of the GPU, and the majority of the area in front of the CPU cooler, or you could just go ahead and vent the entire side panel on the motherboard side, which means that at least with the stock panels you're given, the entire GPU side then has to be glass. One thing you can do when the GPU side is vented is shift a two slot card out so that it's closer to the outside. So I did do that when testing the vented bottom half setup and I'll go ahead and link to that mod video up here so that you can check it out at your convenience. You'll run all case fans as exhaust and what that does here is encourage the makeup air to come in through the side panels and that in turn helps whatever is uh, directly in front of those panels. And one thing I did was mount the 120 millimeter case fans closer to the motherboard side. Uh, you don't have to, but uh, presumably that would bias the airflow through the side panel that's closer to the cooler. Let's take a look at the performance here. For a CPU only test, there's no surprise here. The overclocked 3700X at 4.3 gigahertz runs cooler with their AIO on top of the liquid cooling setup being quieter, about three and a half decibels quieter since even though we could reduce the case fan speeds, the addition of a cooler fan that has to run at 100% to pass the test does add an inordinate amount of noise since the noise curve is a lot higher at the high end. The bottom half vented setup is better here and that's because even though venting the entire motherboard side might seem like a good idea, it creates an easier entry path for makeup air and so instead of helping out the cooler fan, it's actually simply bypassing it. The AIO has a lot more headroom as well since it's far from 100% and so if your priority is truly the CPU, then this is the way to go. For a combined scenario though, that's when the sandwich layout gets really, really interesting with air cooling. For an all systems go test, like we've tested before, the CPU is locked to that lower 4.2 gigahertz clock here, but it's still the upper end of what you could expect with PBO 
And of course, keeping in mind that the air-cooled setup is a bit louder. Well, this performance is actually pretty good. And in terms of thermal performance, it's better than the stock AIO setup, and it's pretty close to the modded diagonal panel setup with the AIO. I think that this data point here is all we need to confirm that the best panel setup for air cooling will be just to vent the entire bottom half because the GPU is too hot with uh, all glass on that side. So we'll rule that setup out going forward. I know some folks wanna go and buy replacement panels to make this an all mesh case, but my recommendation would be to stick with those stock panels. Since the idea here is that the solid panels help direct the makeup air to the GPU and the CPU cooler fan pretty much directly. And if you vent that top half, you're just gonna be bypassing the GPU and the CPU cooler fans. So we've given air pretty much everything we can to help it succeed, and namely really high-end case fans. But just how important is it to fit the third fan at the bottom? So if you're not running an SFX PSU, that bottom fan is gonna be tough. How important is it? For the CPU only scenario, about two and a half degrees is the impact. This particular case fan actually doesn't make much sound. So realistically speaking, it's just a question of value here. And for the combined use scenario, I think it's pretty useful though, especially due to the proximity of the fan to the GPU. And it doesn't have to be a fancy one like the A12 by 25. And one way you might consider setting up air cooling in this case is just to get a three pack of those Arctic P12 ARGBs for your case fans. So a lot of those stress tests required 100% fan speeds on the cooler fan because of the 100% CPU utilization. And that makes the setup louder than an AIO. But what if we just take a look at gaming with a stock AIO setup at equal noise levels to the air-cooled setup, of course, with a shifted GPU here. Now it might seem unbelievable that a dinky little air cooler can stand up to a rad with more surface area. But yeah, that hot GPU really hampers the CPU cooling, especially when the RAT is the exit path here. Of course, if you do the diagonal panel mod for the AIO, the performance will be a little bit better as well. Some of you have commented on the fact that the top ventilation isn't too great, and yeah, it could definitely feature bigger vents, but I think with the radiator gone, the airflow there is fairly acceptable. So there you have it. As long as your CPU isn't a super heat factory, don't count straight air out just yet for the Q58. It's not a super expensive cooler here, and you just have to pair it with three decent fans for what can be quite an effective combination. Hope you found that helpful. Please give a like and subscribe if so. Links are down below for the components and the fans, and thanks for watching today.